If you've clicked on this video, then there's a high probability that you've already received your visa that allows you to travel to Germany. First of all, congratulations. I'm sure you had to jump through a few hoops for you to successfully apply for the visa. Trust me, I know how stressful the process can be because I've been through it. But now, you have this huge nightmare of needing to know what to pack and more importantly, in my opinion, what not to pack because you're only allowed to carry a certain amount of weight onto the plane. Stay tuned to the end of this video as along the way I will give tips that will allow you to be able to pack and carry the most important things without exceeding your airline's weight limit. Before I tell you more about the items on today's list, please be aware that throughout the video I shall assume that you plan to travel with a total of three bags. Two large ones with a maximum limit of 25 kilograms and one carry-on bag. Even though that might not be the case for you, try to ensure that you can fit all the items on this list in the number of bags that your airline ticket allows you to carry. The first item on the list, and in my opinion, the most important one, is your documents. This is because not having all the proper documentation before traveling can cause major inconveniences and even in the worst case, prevent you from entering Germany. Documentation should include those used for identification. These are things such as your passport, birth certificate, and driver's license. Those used to show your reason for travel. So for example, if you're a student, you should have a copy of the acceptance letter from the university. And like in my case, when I landed at the airport for the first time, I was asked for this document in particular. And finally, those documents that may be used in the future. For example, these are physical copies of your previous academic certificates that may be required when you're applying for certain jobs in your new country. In my opinion, it is better to have all the documentation and not need them rather to leave others behind and then have to spend time and money to retrieve them from your home nation. Also, try to have both the original and two photocopies of all the documents that you decide to carry and finally keep these documents in your carry-on bag as sometimes luggage does go missing and the last thing you want to lose is your documents. Since I have mentioned the issue of lost luggage, here's tip number one for you. In case you have an iOS device such as an iPhone, before you travel, please invest in a pack of AirTags. These will help keep track of your luggage as you travel and will help you find your bags in case any issues come up. Next item on the list is money. From the moment you land in the country and leave the airport, you'll immediately be forced to start spending money. For example, to buy a train ticket to get you from the airport to the accommodation. Generally, you'll need money in two forms, the first one being in form of digital currency such as your credit or debit card, Apple Pay, and even Google Pay. Digital currency will be useful for minor transactions such as for paying for food and Ubers. But just be aware that not all businesses allow payments to be done digitally, especially small businesses located in towns or villages far away from urban centers. You also need to be aware that every transaction made will be subject to an extra charge from your bank due to the conversion from whatever currency your card is in to euros, which basically means that you'll be paying more for services than usual. Having physical cash on the other hand is certainly better as you don't need to worry about extra charges and payment limitations as physical money is widely accepted. So as you travel, try to have between 1,000 and 1,500 euros to pay for expenses as you wait for your German bank account to be opened. Lastly, I don't really think I need to say this, but Please keep your money in your carry-on bag. Clothes, in my opinion, should consume as little space or, if possible, the least amount of space out of all the items that you plan to carry to Germany. I know this may seem like a controversial statement, but bear with me. 
I'll explain. There are two types of clothes that you will need as a living adult in Germany. The first one being official clothes. This includes things like shirts with collars, coats, blazers, and pants, and so on. These kinds of clothes are not easy to shop for and in most cases are expensive. The second type are your casual clothes, things like t-shirts and hoodies and sweatpants. You get the idea. These are generally, on the other hand, easier to find and inexpensive to shop for. So in order to save on luggage space, focus on packing more official than casual clothes because you can easily go and shop for casual clothes once you get to Germany. The next piece of advice that I can give when it comes to packing clothes is that you should mostly pack clothes for the upcoming season. One mistake particularly those traveling for the first time make is that they try to pack clothes for all season and then run out of space for the things that they will need once they actually arrive in Germany. Because space is so limited, try to only pack for at most the next three to six months. For example, if you're traveling to Germany before the summer, let's say in April, just pack for clothes for the upcoming summer period. And like I said before, once you get here, you can buy more clothes specifically for the winter that will come after your first summer period. So as a recap, when packing your clothes, prioritize official clothes over casual clothes as they are harder and more expensive to shop for and only pack for the upcoming winter or summer season to save on luggage space. And lastly, when packing, use the rolling method instead of folding the conventional way and you will be able to fit way more clothes while using way less space. Electronic items usually include laptops, tablets, and phones, generally portable items. And I only have three pieces of advice when it comes to traveling to Germany and electronics. One, try as much as possible to put all your electronic devices in your carry-on bag. This is for two main reasons. It is better to have them with you at all times because you may need to use them at some point. And also leaving expensive electronic devices in your suitcase exposes it to the possibility of damage during travel. Imagine after your flight, you find out that the screen of your $2,000 laptop isn't working anymore because someone dropped your suitcase. Two, be aware of the charging situation because in Germany, two pin sockets are normally used. So if you come from Kenya, for example, where three pin sockets are common, you'll need to buy a few universal plugs before you arrive. Finally, if you're planning to buy new electronics before coming to Germany, I would highly advise you not to do so. Because items bought in Germany usually have a six months warranty. Therefore, if the device is defective, you can easily get it fixed or replaced. But if you buy it from your home nation and come with it here and it's defective, you're basically screwed. This, in my opinion, is the item that I think should take up majority of your luggage space as you pack to come to Germany. In a previous video, I talked about culture shocks I encountered when I first came to Germany and I said this. Let's just say the food in Germany tastes different. And please, don't get me wrong. It's not that the food here is bad. It's just that it doesn't taste as good as the food I was used to back home. Like in the first few weeks after I arrived, I started craving homemade dishes such as ugali, pilau, nyamachoma, chapati, and so on. <coughs> to avoid making the same mistakes I did, try to pack as much food from your home country as possible because there's a high possibility that you will not be able to get them here in Germany. And if you do, it will probably be expensive. If I had the chance to go back in time to the week where I was to first travel to Germany, I would use one whole suitcase just for food because I barely wore some of the clothes I came with from home and I really missed a lot of the foods that I left back in Kenya. By the way, after you're done watching this video, you can check out this one where I talked about the 11 differences between my home nation and Germany Link in the description down below.
Lastly, please remember to carry some medicines, particularly painkillers, some for upset stomachs, and maybe ointments for physical injuries such as twists and sprains. This is because in Germany there is a more strict policy on over-the-counter medication. So you may find that you may need to go to a doctor and get a prescription for medicines that you could get over the counter in your home nation. And there you have it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, bye!